All right, ladies and gents, welcome back to another episode of Math with Mr. Young. Today we're working with 7.7 .7 volumes of rectangular prisms. Our standard is Geometry A for 6th grade, and our objective is that we're going to be able to find volumes and missing dimensions of rectangular prisms. In our mathematical literacy, we have volume. All right, 7.7 .7 volumes of rectangular prisms. Our success criteria is that we're going to be able to use a formula to find the volume of a rectangular prism and also use that formula to find the volume of a cube. So we're looking at three-dimensional uh, cubes, three-dimensional figures. So we're going to cube uh, with an exponent of three. Okay. Uh, we're also going to be able to use that volume of a rectangular prism and two of its dimensions to find the other unknown missing dimension value. And also we're going to apply volumes of rectangular prisms to solve real life problems. Our mathematical literacy, we have the word volume. And in math, the volume of a three-dimensional figure refers to the number of cubic units needed to fill the figure. Or put more simply, how much will fit in there? The answer is called the volume. Now, we have three different shapes here. We have, and these are all three-dimensional uh, shapes as well. We have a cone. Uh, it's inverted upside down, though. We have a cube and we have a cylinder, okay? So think of this cone as the, um, like a little cup that you would fill water up and to drink, all right? So in this case, this little cone here, you have uh, a, a liquid amount here. Now the capacity or the volume would be the amount that, that the amount of water that that uh, cup can hold, that cone here, okay? Now here we have this three-dimensional cube, um, and we have uh, like it looks like we think of like a water barrel that we use to haul water to feed our livestock, okay? Or maybe we use that a water barrel to to fill up, um, you know, one of our tanks that we can use to to have uh, running water. All right. So again, you know, I want to relate that back to real life here. And again, the the volume is the capacity inside of an object and how much uh, how much space is inside the object that that thing can hold. All right. So that's what we're learning about today is capacity. Um, so again, we have rectangular prisms. Again, this lesson is about finding the volumes of rectangular prisms. OK, so. Uh, here we have the x-axis, which is the width side to side. We have the y-axis, which is the height, okay, how tall. And the z-axis, the depth, but it's also the length, how long. Okay, so x, y, z for three-dimensional figures, all right? So we're going to use these dimensions here and, and use them as measurements to find the volume inside these three-dimensional objects. Now. To find the volume of a rectangular prism, we can use this formula. Volume, to find the volume, you have to multiply. Okay, we're multiplying. The length, the z-axis, times the width, the x-axis, times the height, the y-axis. Okay, so you're getting those measurements. Sorry about that. You're getting those measurements and you're multiplying them. And when you do that, you're gonna get the volume. But don't forget, let's say that inches, let's say we're working with inches. Because it's three dimensional, you have to put an exponent of three up top of whatever value um, you have for the volume. All right, so it's pretty simple and straightforward and let's go ahead and get into it. All right, our first example, we're going to find the volumes of rectangular prisms, all right? Now, I have steps listed here. So step one, we're going to write the formula. Step two, we're going to substitute the values. Step three, we're going to multiply. And if needed, we're going to simplify. All right, now when we find the volume, again, you have your, your y-axis. How tall is this uh, rectangular prism? Now again, just to remind you, it's a prism because it has two base values. Okay, here's base one and base two, all right? So it is three dimensional. One dimension is the y-axis. The second dimension is your x-axis. 
the third dimension, okay? This is your Z axis. The depth, or if you will, the, the length, all right? So we're gonna take these values and we're gonna substitute them into the formula. Now the volume formula for three-dimensional uh, figures, excuse me, it's gonna be multiplying the length times the width times the height, all right? So let's find the, the length. The, the length here is gonna be the z-axis, all right? So the length here, and I'll color code this, is um, the depth. So the depth here looks like it's one or a half, half a meter. Okay, let me put that in. Volume equals the length here, substituting half a meter, times the width. Now the width here is going to be the x-axis, okay? So the x-axis right here, and the x-axis is seven-eighths. Seven-eighths meters times the height. And the height here is going to be how tall? Five-eighths. Five-eighths meters. All right, now, uh, this works also with whole numbers, but right now we're working with fractions, okay? Now, just remember, Unlike adding and, and mold, I'm sorry, unlike adding and subtracting fractions, anytime you multiply fractions, the denominator does not have to be the same. And you can just multiply your numerator straight across. You can multiply your denominator straight across. All right. Now I'm going to do this one with a calculator. So volume equals again. So we're going to multiply half times seven eighths times five eighths. All right, let's multiply the numerators first. So, so this is gonna be like one times seven times five, and then your denominators. Two times eight times eight. Whatever it is, is gonna be meters. You have three dimensions, X, Y, Z. This is gonna be meters cubed okay all right so here we go so i'll just get my calculator here and i'll just put it down for now and let's just multiply one times seven equals seven and then times five equals 35. so i'm gonna put 35 right here put my fraction bar there now let's multiply the denominators here clear it out two times eight equals 16 times 8 more equals 128. All right, so this is going to be 3 over 128 meters cubed. Okay, now here uh, we're going to have to simplify this now. All right, so volume equals 35 over 128 meters cubed. So we're gonna have to simplify this. All right, so I think that's as far as we can go. Um, this can't be simplified anymore. All right, so there you go, that's our final answer. But if you could simplify it, then you would simplify it. So the volume of the rectangular prism is 35 over 128 meters cube. All right, there you guys go. Again, just go over your steps. The first step, you write the formula. Volume equals the length times the width times the height. Now remember the length is the Z axis, the width is the X axis, and the height is the Y axis. So these three dimensions you multiply together. Um, if you have fractions, multiply all your numerators, okay? and then multiply all of your denominators and reduce it if you need to. All right, there you guys go. All right, so the last example we're gonna do is we're gonna find a missing dimension of this rectangular prism. Now here, it already told us the volume. We know that the total volume of this rectangular prism is 1,792 inches cubed, all right? So again, one dimension is the height. Okay, that's our y-axis. Another dimension is 
our uh, width, that is the x-axis. Another dimension is the length or the depth, and that's our z-axis. Those three dimensions and the height, the weight, I'm sorry, the height, the width, and the length are all measurements, all right? On the right side, I do have these steps. If you're gonna find a missing dimension, as always, just like before, you write the formula, substitute the values. We do have to simplify. Because we're finding a missing value, we do have to use the division property of equality to find the missing value. And then again, once we get that, we simplify. All right, here we go. So the first thing we're gonna do is write the formula. Formula equals volume equals the length times the width times the height. Again, that is the z-axis multiplied by the x-axis multiplied by the y-axis. Okay, so those three dimensions we multiply together to get the volume. Now, here it says that the uh, we do have some values. We do know the, the width. The width here is seven inches. So this is seven inches for the width. We know that the, the Z axis here is 16 inches, the, the length, 16 inches. Volume equals the length, 16 inches, times the width, seven inches, and then times the height. We don't know the height, okay? We don't know the height. This is the missing dimension that we don't know. All right, so we don't know the how tall it is. All right, so now we're gonna, we, sub, we uh, wrote the formula and we substituted the values. Now we have to simplify. All right, now here's how we simplify. Now we know that the volume equals 1,792 inches cubed. So I'm gonna put 1,792 inches cubed equals, and then 16 times seven, we multiply the z-axis times the x-axis. 16 times seven will be 112 inches squared. Squared because I only multiplied one two dimension, so I square it with the exponent two. And then I don't know the, the height at all, so I'm just gonna put h there, all right? So we simplified. Now we have to use the division property of equality here. So again, that's just like when we work with uh, algebraic uh, expressions and you know all that good stuff. So I'm gonna divide by 112 here because I wanna isolate the variable. I'm gonna divide by 112 on both sides of that equation, both sides of the equal sign, okay? So <clears throat> like I said, I'm divided by 112 on both sides of the equation to isolate the variable h, okay? So 112 divided by 112 equals one, okay? So that cancels out. Um, inches squared, by the way. And then that cancels out. And then what's left behind is the value for h, all right? So I'll use my calculator here just to help you guys out. So right here, we're gonna divide. Um, 1,792 divided by 112. So 1,792 divided by 112 equals 16. So we're saying that the height is gonna equal 16, all right? So H equals 16. Now we wanna check this, okay? So how we check it, let's go back up here. I know that the volume equals um, the length times the width times the height. We know that the volume equals 1,792 inches cubed. The length here is 16 inches. The width here is seven inches. And the height we're saying is 16 inches. So what we're gonna do to check is we're going to multiply these three numbers the, the length, the width, and the height, these three dimensions. So 16 times seven times 16 should equal 1,792. And if it does equal that, if they are equivalent, then this is correct. Let's go ahead and hit enter. Boom. We have 1,792. 
1792 and look 1792 is equivalent to 1792 so it does check so this is correct and our missing dimension our height is 16 inches all right again there we go that's how you find the missing dimen uh, dimension of a rectangular prism so you do have to uh, pay attention to what's in front of you and with mathematics not only are you looking for patterns but the answers are always right in front of you you're given a lot of uh, clues it gave us the total amount for the volume it gave us the measurement for the x value it gave us the measurement for the uh, z value we didn't know the measurement for the h value the height but again we we found that missing dimension by using the division property of equality all right there you go my friends so hopefully you guys understand a bit more and uh, remember to always ask questions asking questions is key to be successful okay now again here we go buy now for 7.7 .7 volumes of rectangular prisms uh, by now you should be able to use a formula to find the volume of a rectangular prism remember volume equals length times the width times the height uh, you should also be able to use this formula to find the volume of a cube okay cubes three-dimensional exponent of three and you should also be able to use the volume of a rectangular prism and two with of its dimensions to find the other dimension just like what we did here the volume of the rectangular prism and two of its dimensions to find the value of the unknown dimension all right and also you can also use this uh volumes of rectangular prisms to solve real life problems all right guys it was a lot of fun make sure you guys ask questions and get your work done all right get those assignments in that is a money maker for your grade and uh, also do that for the other subjects